call the meeting to order for the uh, Macomico County Council Legislative Session 2018-01, January 2nd, 2016. Those that like to stand and join us in the Lord Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our Good evening, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> First item on the agenda, entertain a motion to approve legislative minutes from uh, December 12, 2017. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried, minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the legislative minutes from December 19, 2017. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from December 5th, 2017 in reference to the Hidden Pond subdivision. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from December 5th, 2017 in reference to the supplemental lease agreement. So moved. Second. Second. All those, uh, any corrections? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from December 5th, 2017 in reference to the personnel manual. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from December 5th, 2017 in reference to the Wicomico Economic Impact Scholarship. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion's carried, minutes are approved. Good evening, Mrs. Hurley, how are you? Good evening, Council President, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we do have one change to the agenda this evening, and that is the Urban Services Commission Resolution Number 01-2018. We'll be discussed in a work session following the legislative session and the updated agenda is on the council table. The first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing on resolution number 01-2018 to remove a forest conservation easement consisting of approximately 17.3 acres, more or less, located along the northerly, northerly side of Walnut Tree Road and the westerly side of Campground Road in the Hidden Pond subdivision. A public notice was published in the Daily Times stating that a public hearing would be held this evening. Thank you. At this time, we open the floor for a public hearing on Resolution 01-2018. If you have any comments you'd like to make in reference to this resolution, come to the podium, please. State your name and your county of residence and your concerns. That concludes the public hearing on Resolution 01-2018. Entertain a motion from Council to approve Resolution 01-2018. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on resolution number 02-2018, approving a supplemental lease agreement between Wacomico County, Maryland, and the United States of America for approximately 982 square feet of office space for the FAA Field Service Station at the Salisbury hyphen Ocean City Wacomico Regional Airport to provide for a two year extension to the current lease term. A public hearing notice was published in the Daily Times stating that a public hearing would be held this evening at 6 p.m. <coughs> Thank you. At this time, we open the floor for a public hearing on resolution number 02 2018. Uh, if you uh, would like to make any comments in reference to this, come to the podium, please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Thank you. 
Seeing none, that concludes the public hearing on resolution number 02-2018 and obtain a motion from council to approve resolution 02-2018. So so moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Okay, the next item for business is the audit presentation by Pig, Crawl, and Stern. Okay. Good evening. I'd also like to mention uh, Vice President of the City Council, Jack Heath, is here tonight. Glad to have you, Jack. And we have the uh, in um, Intergovernmental Affairs Liaison for the Eastern Shore for the Governor's Office, uh, Bunky Luffman. Thank you for being here, Bunky. <coughs> Jack, did I, what did I say? Vice President. Sorry, Jack, President. Sorry about that. <laughs> had, had to make a call, right? Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Yeah. President. State your you name. For sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Kleger. I'm a partner with PCAS and Company. And uh, joining me this evening is uh, Ashley Stern. She's the uh, manager in charge of the county's audit. Um, <clears throat> You should have uh, hopefully had received a, a draft copy of the financial statements prior to today's meeting. Um, a little light reading over the holidays, I'm sure. Uh, if you had any <laughs> problems staying this uh, week, that would be uh, good, good to read that. But uh, we had also previously delivered a draft of the uh, financial statements and the reports with the management and the finance department uh, prior to tonight's meeting. So everyone's had a chance to review those. Uh, and the adjusting entries that we made and proposed have been approved. Okay. Um, our purpose tonight is to present the audit results, uh, mention some of the key highlights, and then, of course, answer any questions you might have. If there are any, if there, occasionally there's some follow-up questions prior after tonight's meeting, we'll be glad to answer those too. Just, just contact us, and we'll be glad to get back to you. Okay. Um, I would like to start with the report in the financial package, which is on pages one through three. <clears throat> um, the, top, the page one and the top of page two uh, of the audit report is basically covers management's responsibility for the financial statements uh, as well as the auditor's responsibility to report on those financial statements and issue an opinion. And the opinion paragraph is actually in the middle of page two. Um, and I'm happy to report that our opinion on the county's financial statements for the year ended June 30th, 2017 is unmodified. And this is also referred to as a clean audit opinion um, <clears throat> and is the highest level of assurance that we can provide as auditors. Um, an unmodified opinion means that the financial statements present fairly the financial position of the county in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, following that report is on pages four and five is a report on uh, internal controls and compliance matters. Uh, unlike uh, the audit report, this is not an opinion on internal controls and compliance matters, but rather is a report of, uh, of any findings or weaknesses noted in, in the audit based on our audit testing. Uh, once again, I'm happy to report that we did not find any material weaknesses or compliance matters that need to be reported during this year's audit testing. Uh, so that's kind of a summary of the two reports that are in there, very similar to last year's. If you read, kind of compare the last year to this year, you'll, you'll see the wording is, is virtually the same. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Ashley to cover some of the financial highlights. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually just going to work out of the blue packet that you got. It's a, it just shows the detail of the slides a little bit clearer than needing to look up on the screen. Um, so I'm not going to ask you to flip through any pages because I know you have a brief book with different page numbers than what are in our uh, actual bound statements. The first uh, item that you see in front of you or the first graph that you see actually has to do with your general fund equity. I wanted to point out that you've seen an increase in your general fund equity over the pa or fund balance over the past five years. From 2016 to 2017, you saw a $2.7 million increase in your fund balance. This shows the health of the organization or government. Uh, however, unassigned actually decreased slightly, and that's just due to the class required classifications of the fund balances. There's five different classifications. Uh, within that within fund balance, but overall it grew uh, significantly and a lot of that depends on timing uh, it, We've also seen a steady increase over the past five years, which shows a positive growth for the uh, for the countywide The next graph you'll see is your general fund revenues and if you're in the packet I'm actually kind of uh, towards the middle Joe, I saw that you um, In uh, in 2016 to 2017, you saw a $5 million growth to $136 million in your general fund revenues. 
Most of that growth was seen in both your property taxes as well as your income taxes. We saw a, a, an increase in $2 million from your income taxes from 2016, as well as a $1 million increase in property taxes. And property taxes include both your real estate taxes and your personal property taxes from 2016. In comparison to the budget, we actually saw that total revenues were came in higher than the budget by about $7 million. Specifically, income taxes actually came in higher than budgeted by $4.7 million, and other taxes, which include your real estate and your property taxes, uh, came in higher than budgeted by $1.3 million, so a positive note on your revenues. The general fund expenditures is the next graph that you'll see. Uh, expenses actually increased from 2016 due to benefit costs, including hospitalization, uh, health care, as well as uh, workman's comp, debt service cost increase, as well as various capital costs that were budgeted to increase. Expenses actually came in under budget, so to the favorable side, by $2.8 million. If you're looking for a detail of that, that can be found on page 129 of the physical copy of the statements that you have just for further reference. Actually, yes. a question there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on, on the revenues, um, general fund revenues, mm -hmm. do you track or I'll pay attention to the regional revenues of other counties? Is this, is this a trend you know, in the region that most counties are seeing? Regional meaning like Somerset, Worcester, Dorchester? The shore. Yeah. The income tax revenues, we did see an increase otherwise, but we don't necessarily, I don't have the figures, mm -hmm. uh, but I can get them for you. I have all of them mm -hmm. in our work papers. There is a subsequent budget resolution that you'll see within the financial statements. It's not actually reflected in the budget numbers. So when I'm referring to ex the expense budget, it doesn't include that most recent budget res <coughs> resolution. We also have a, a chart kind of showing exactly what percentages where the county's money is being spent. 36% of the expenditures is actually spent in education but that doesn't include the debt service for the education, just education expenses in general. 15% in public safety, 11% for the detention center, and about 11% for the general government activities as well. What would it be if you included the debt service in education? Off the top of my head, I don't know the percentage. For we also wanted to take a look at a couple enterprise funds just to give you a trend over the last five years, draw some things to your attention. Uh, on the next chart, you actually have solid waste or the solid waste department or fund. We saw a positive increase over the past five years. We've seen an increase in uh, revenues there as well as an increase in the operating income over the past five years. If you're looking at that graph, we saw 2013, 2014, we're actually operating at a loss whereas it has thus changed in the past three years to have an operating income. We also have the airport uh, five-year trend in front of you. <coughs> One of the things that I want to caution you when looking at uh, the airport and as well as the Civic Center that I'll show you next is grant revenue. Grant revenue you'll see as a one-time year, uh, a one-year thing. You'll see the revenue that gets recognized in one year, but then you'll see the subsequent expenses for depreciation in the years to follow. So when you're looking at the operating income or operating loss or the change in net position, uh, to be mindful or be, uh, of the revenue from the grants that were actually recognized in previous years. That's the case for 2016 versus 2017 for the airport. There was grant revenue in 2016 that was for 2017 expenditures like depreciation for capital improvements. So thus you saw a, change, a positive change in your net position in 2016, but actually a decrease in your net position for 2017. Civic Center has a similar uh, caution where we've seen some grant revenues or non-operating revenues, including the transfer from the general fund to the Civic Center. That is included in our non-operating. So over the past three years, you've seen a difference in your change in net position or your, your net income for, for other terms. Uh, this past year, you actually saw a $1.2 million decrease in your net position. And a lot of that has to do with recognizing depreciation for this year, where you've had capital expenses for previous years previous years. 
The small packet that you have in front of you is actually our auditor's communications, and I wanted to run through a few things that are in there. The first letter that you see is our management letter. These are our friendly comments to suggestions that we have that to be brought to the council's attention. The first comment has to do with the inventory at roads and solid waste. We had uh, the year end counts weren't done within a, time, within a timely manner and the adjustment was needed to be made. Uh, however, there has been a subsequent new policy that is implemented. There was a count done on December 31st and there'll be quarterly counts from here on out to help fulfill that requirement. And this solely has to do with the timing of when personnel have been there. They're, stu they're still <coughs> looking for a personnel out of their roads. We also had a comment about encumbrances. We did see an improvement in the reporting process of encumbrances. However, some departments had uh, purchase orders that still need to be closed at the beginning of our audit. So we wanted to bring that to council's attention. Our last comment is a required comment through our auditing standards. It has to do with the schedule, schedule of federal expenditures. Uh, there were a few changes that needed to be made to that, thus we're required to report it to governance or to the council. Um, but we expect those changes not to need to be made in the future. The second letter that you're seeing is our required communications with those charged with governance. Uh, I'm happy to say that we had no significant deficiency, uh, difficulties during the audit, no major problems, issues with timing, um, and all required reports have been filed. I'd like to take this moment to really thank the council as well as the executive staff, the finance department, as well as all county personnel who've had to um, suffer through our audit. You know, this year it's not necessarily the most fun process for them, but you know, thank you to everyone uh, for all your help. <coughs> Is there any questions? Joe, I can answer your uh, earlier oh. question concerning the debt service payments. <coughs> um, about eight, looks like about 80, 85 percent of that is for the Board of Ed. Um, of our debt service. Yeah, so, so if that's, you add that into the, into the pie, yeah, um, that would add another. Of course, you'd, you know, have to, you'd have to have debt service for all, everything because we probably that's have That's correct. Debt service right. Yeah, and, and the breakdown of debt service is actually on page 133 of the financial mm -hmm. statements to right. kind of list what's the county and what's the okay. Board of Ed. So okay. just to kind of address that question that you answered earlier. The other question I had. Um, we're looking at about a million dollar increase in operating expenses at the Civic Center. Um, was there um, an explanation for that? Uh, operating expenses actually include <coughs> depreciation as well. So part of that is the increase in depreciation, uh, which might be better if that's detailed otherwise, because <coughs> mostly depreciation is considered not operating. However, you're required to report that as operating. So there was an increase in depreciation, but there was also additional repairs and maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. uh, that insurance proceeds are actually recognized as non-operating, and that was about two hundred thousand dollars. So quite a quite a bit, unfortunately. Right. Other questions, Mrs. Hurley? Did you have any questions? I do have a couple, actually. <clears throat> um, on the property tax revenue, the report mentions that there was a decrease of 16399 from FY16 levels, um, which was mostly due to the county's five-year phase-out of the business inventory tax. In comparing fiscal year 15 and 14, there was a 90% change increase. Do you recall why there was a 90% increase that year? I do not, but I will get back to you on that. Okay. <coughs> um, the other question I had was on the management discussion and analysis. Mm -hmm. um, the new revenue for fines and forfeitures is down 40.7%, and it looks like it's been decreasing for five years. Do you know a specific reason as to why that is? I'm, I'm actually going to defer and see if Don, Don, do you happen to know anything off the top of your head? I have nothing off the top of my head. Okay. I, I will double check into that, Laura. Okay, that's all I have. Yes. My guess is we're not pursuing that. In other words, if the fine, if, if the fine has been issued to some degree, we're not pursuing that. I guess that would be, that would, uh, because it may involve litigation. And, um, um, from what I understand, I think we were not litigating <coughs> some of those uh, fines are being assessed. That might be. Which I think is a concern. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else? anything else? That's it for now. Okay. Thank okay. you. Council? 
Any other questions? We, we'll probably have a work uh, work session sometime sure. in the future here as, yeah. as we get a chance to more thoroughly. Yeah, as I said, this. we'll be glad to, to address any specific questions from, okay. uh, after today's meeting. Okay, right. great. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Happy New Year. Same to you. Thanks. Next, we have resolution number 03-2018, confirming the appointment of Ola K. Metacroft to the AMO Appeals Board. Obtain a motion to, uh, to approve resolution 03-2018. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Next is resolution number 04-2018 authorizing the county executive to execute on behalf of Wacomico County a project agreement for a loan in the amount of $96,287 plus $4,408 for technical and administrative services from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources for the Cove Road Beach Shore Erosion Control Project. This project is shown in the Capital Improvement Pro Program for fiscal year 19 and the council has previously had a work session on this project. Entertain a, a motion to approve resolution 04-2018. So Second. Second. Any further discussion? As Mrs. Hurley said, we did have a work session on this. Any? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor of resolu resolution 04-2018 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Okay. And the next item for business is resolution number 05-2018. Authorizing the county executive to execute on behalf of Wacomico County a project agreement for a loan in the amount of $200,989 plus $8,491 for technical and administrative services from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources for the Roaring Point Shore Erosion Control Project. This project is also shown in the Capital Improvement Program for fiscal year 19 and council had a work session on this project as well. Thank you, Mr. Early. Uh, entertain a motion to approve resolution 05 2018. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution 05 2018 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Mr. President, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. <clears throat> If you're following the agenda, you will note that, uh, as Mrs. Hurley noted um, prior to the beginning of the meeting, that the um, discussions in reference to the uh, Urban Services Commission will not be held as a resolution. That will be held as a work session later on in the uh, uh, meeting. Uh, Mr. Taylor, good evening. Good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, we have one uh, bill for introduction tonight, Legislative Bill 2018 dash 01 uh, introduced by the council president it is an <coughs> act to repeal the current chapter 133 of the wicomico county code entitled dogs and other animals and in and enact a new chapter 133 titled animal control um, just without getting into the weeds obviously it's a complete replacement uh, of what was in the uh, code already uh, which, which was, I think, generally referred to as the Animal Control <coughs> Ordinance, even it was, though it was called Dogs and Other Animals. Um, I won't get into the weeds, but one thing I might point out is that the definition under the old act of a domestic animal, in other words, the act that's being, the ordinance that's being repealed, was an animal of a tamed species commonly kept as a pet, such as a dog or cat, uh, under the new ordinance, uh, under this bill, a domestic animal would have that same first part, an animal of a tame species commonly kept as a pet, only the new language would be including cats, dogs, cows, fowl, ferrets, horses, or swine. So at least in looking at it on the surface, it possibly is broader in that sense than the old ordinance. Um, now. I can say this, I mean, when I grew up, our cows and hogs weren't considered pets, so I don't know what exactly this means, whether it means the entire species or only, for example, a pet pig 
So that's, I just point that out because that is a difference. And I won't get into the rest of the weeds on the ordinance because there are a lot of them. All right, thank you, Mr. Taylor. What I, what I would suggest tonight is only the introduction. Uh, certainly, if you want to present the council with a memo to that effect between now and when we actually vote on the, on the legislative bill formally, then uh, that would be a benefit. Okay? Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor of the introduction of legislative bill 01 2018 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Introduction of legislative bill 01 2018 passes. Mrs. Hurley? Yeah, we can have the public hearing on February the 6th. February the 6th. That. At okay. 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. Okay, so I know there are many of you here tonight that are interested in this. So um, this will be uh, the, the public hearing for this bill will be February the 6th at 6 p.m. Correct. Um, at that time, I'm guessing no unforeseen uh, sur surprises, the council will probably vote on that legislative bill. Maybe there may be some amendments uh, between now and then if any suggestions might come before us. Um, if you do have those uh, suggestions, I would suggest you do that now as opposed to the public hearing. Uh, that would give the council more time to review it. And of course, Mr. Taylor, what you have suggested tonight, we certainly would want to take into consideration as well. So the public hearing again will be uh, February 6th, you said, right? That is correct. 6 p.m. All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. This time we open the floor for public comments. If you have any public comments you would like to make, come to the podium, please. State your name and your county of residence and um, whatever your concern might be. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. My name is Stephen Wolf, and I have a concern. I live in a mobile home park. It's called Cedarhurst Mobile Home Park, and it was just bought out by investors out in New York and Florida. And our Christmas present from them was they doubled our rent. We have a lot of people out there who are 70 years of age and older. There are um, a lot of sick people, cancer, and they could just barely make ends meet now. And I'm one of them. I moved out there so I could retire peacefully without any additional expenses. And with this increase in rent, I can't afford anything, and neither can anybody else. So my concern is I'm out here pleading with the council to present some kind of a referendum to prevent this from ever happening again, because there's absolutely no laws in Maryland or Wicomico County to prevent uh, investors like this to do things to the, to the county residents. And we have other people from our residents here. I don't know if they want to add anything to it or not. <clears throat> Without anything? Thank you, Mr. But anyway, I just, I, we would like to have a referendum up to prevent this, like put a cap on what they can do, because that's, that's ridiculous to almost double the rent. Well, I appreciate your comments. We, uh, we did receive your letter, and I want to thank you for that. And uh, I had Mr. Taylor review it, and um, just uh, roughly, but we'll, we'll review it further and, and get back to you, probably with a formal statement letting you know what the council's position is. Okay. But like I say, I, I appreciate it because okay. something's really got to be done because senior citizens out there, they're, they're basically going to be put out on the street. I understand. And that's not, that's not right. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Wolf. you. Any other public comments? Good evening, my name is Karma King. I'm also a resident at Cedarhurst Mobile Home Park. <clears throat> I would also like to second his comment in, in regards to considering a cap for the amount of the increase that um, landlords are able to do. Um, and then also to take into consideration the amount of time for them to notify, notify you of such. We got 30 days notice. Um, it was a hard hit. And um, also I would, I knew that there's a mobile home act for Maryland. 
um, in regards to the lease that they um, require the residents of the, the mobile home parks to, to sign. Um, it's pretty clear to me in the lease that um, they have the ability to possess your, your home. Um, I think that needs to be looked at a little bit further. Um, it's very threatening to an individual, especially when we're buying the, the home that's on the lot. We're just leasing the, the lot that it's on. Um, I, for myself, can say that it's a little disheartening to me to know that I'm, I'm buying something that I thought I was going to be living in with having to sign an agreement that allows them to come in and... Um, take my possessions and or my home. So I think that also is something that should be looked at as well. Okay. Thank you, Ms. King. Any other public comments? I just want to throw okay. Thank you. <coughs> Seeing none other, that concludes public comments, uh, council comments. Hang on a second, because i got to find my piece of paper. We changed policies where I have to be very specific on how we close the meeting. Entertain a motion to adjourn from legislative session to go into an open work session before the Urban Services Commission. So moved. Then to reconvene as the county council for open work sessions, followed by a closed work session to discuss personnel pursuant to the general provisions of Article Section 3-305B1 to protect employee <laughs> confidentiality. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Meeting's adjourned. We're now, um, I guess we'll do the urban. Well, hang we'll, on we'll a second. I think we'll put urban services last so that everybody that's here can. Um, okay. Is that, I, I would think that would be best, right? Okay. Because everyone here is most likely on all the other work sessions. That's true. First item on the on the uh, open work session is Councilmanic District Map Software presentation. Mr. McKenzie, I saw you walk in. There you are. He's going to need about five minutes to set up for oh, his yes? presentation. Okay. Good evening. How are you? Great.